It's always fun to create conversation. It's what we do on Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. We are unplugged and totally uncut with actor Chris Cooper and his wife, author and playwright, Marianne Leon. You too. My God. It's like you guys were living in my house when it when it comes to within. I mean, I mean, everything from, from the turkeys. I have doves. You guys had turkeys. But everything about your story in this is just so spot on. This is oh, great. great. This is great. We went into uh, we went into uh, Manhattan uh, to see uh, this this film uh, inv- invited uh, all these uh, 12, 13 um, couples were invited to, you know, take a, a viewing of the film and a little after party. And so in the same respect, you know, Rosie Perez, who did a did a vignette, came over with her husband to uh, Marianne and me and she said we were we when we watched your segment we were elbowing each other <laughs> because we recognized so much of this relationship yeah they they weren't the only ones either another couple came up and said yeah we elbowed each other the entire time so. oh my god even even the distance and stuff like that do you want me to sit over here and chew on these these nuts and stuff like that i mean <laughs> <laughs> Oh, misophonia is more common than we know, right? Right. Yeah. And and, and it's so true. And I'll, I'll tell you one of the things that, that really uh, an elbower, I guess, would be when, when you kept checking in with the death count. Because, I mean, it was because I was always, to this day, I'm still looking at those numbers. It's true. It's really true. That's, that's what we were doing. It was... Uh, the only I, and this Chris says this is the closest role to his actual self that uh, he's ever played. So that was fun. And the part that made me mad was that he did a quip in in the scene that was funnier than anything I had written. I was so mad that he got to do. That. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, yeah, Marianne's the comedian, but I came up with a good one. You <laughs> did. <thank> you. <laughs> During the time of lockdown and stuff like that, one one of the things I, I kept, I, I was blessed with the opportunity to continue talking with creative people. But I, one of the things that we don't talk about is 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 the moment of anger that a lot of creative people went through for the first six to seven months. How did you guys deal with that where you're going, I don't know what's next? Uh, I had, well, uh, you know, I had uh, just, I had come off in 2019, at the end of 2019, I had come off a limited series called Homecoming on um, on one of the Amazon Prime, I think. And so I was ready for a break. Um, and actually I'm not, I'm not too antsy about the next job. I love being home. I love being with Marianne. You know, and I can keep myself busy with just honeydew business around the house, you know. But um, after a while, you, you 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 do get the itch to get back to work. And um, I just, I was fortunate enough, there was a, a good uh, script that shot in Boston here, where we live. So um, I've just finished that about three weeks ago. Um, so I'm uh, enjoying this break right now, yeah. you know. I, yeah. I miss people so much that my, my wife goes, the only place you're going to be with people is go get a job at a grocery store. And I said, I've never done that before. And I did. My God, people in real life. that That's a wow. It's really true. And I'm like you. I really I miss that kind of socializing. But we got to see that every day because we adopted two rescue dogs Aww. because Frenchie. Frenchie, who was the custody dog, uh, passed away. He was 17. Mm. And, Who's in the film? Who's in the, was film. in the film? Yep, yep. And we adopted these two uh, girl Bichons, um, T.T. and Sugar. They sound like pole dancers. They're from Louisiana. <laughs> and um, we walk them every day. And, you know, you just meet people. that You see the same people walking, you know what I mean, walking your dog. So that was our only socializing. And that was kind of great. That being able to actually see people. My, my rescue, my rescue must be listening to you because I mean she's sitting right here behind me in the studio and she's <laughs> she's, a, she's a little talker. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> but don't you? Oh, I mean, yeah, we have one of those. We have one of those who goes on her back during the times when we're doing these uh, things, and she oh. has what I call dog ass. <laughs> 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 well, I, I love the way that you made it relatable in the very opening scenes, in the way that you, you, you were asked if you had the mask. And then, then of all things, this this is the part I really busted a gut on, is when you sneeze, allergies, allergies, and because I did yeah. that too. Because <laughs> you couldn't 
couldn't sneeze then. You couldn't right. cough or sneeze. Yeah, it's too terrifying. <laughs> Even now, still so, in a closed place. So. As, as creative people, how have you grown forward? Because you know in five to ten years, nobody's going to believe that any of this took place. How have we grown? grown from yeah, this? Grown, grown that- because you, I mean, you had alone time inside your head and heart and you had alone time between the two of you. I mean, as, as creative people, you never stop growing. But the thing is, is that sometimes you need that introverted time to create things. Mm-hmm. Like I finished the third book during the um, quarantine. I wrote a book about rescue dogs. I oh. wrote uh, Five Dog Epiphany, which is about grief and mutual healing and rescues. And, uh, you know, actors, too, need to go within sometimes to just uh, recalibrate. Right? And what and what and what social, you know, Marianne's very, very social and, and I enjoy it, too. And we've gotten together with some couples. So around the dinner table, that's exactly what has come up. I've asked folks during this two years of covid have you have you felt a personal change or how how are you thinking or observing yourself and and can you know comment about it Mm -hmm. because i'm 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 still trying to look at myself and wonder you know how has this affected me Mm -hmm. and i'm still i'm still wondering you know yeah i'm a daily writer so i journal every day and and i gotta be honest with you i i'm i'm in fear of going back to those days from march 13th forward of 2020 because i i sometimes i want to know what he was going through other times i'm going just leave it there it's for somebody else it's not for you yes yes i i kept a plague diary too and it was it was very helpful i I do that too. I think it's great. I do miss my family though, because I miss seeing the little ones, you know, and um, I didn't want to, you know, we didn't want to expose ourselves to kids who couldn't yet get vaccinated. So it was, it was, that was what I missed the most being first generation Italian, right? I mean, both my parents were immigrants from Italy. So yeah. So it was like big family gatherings are a norm, you know, and <laughs> got introduced to good food for the first time. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you, that's interesting you bring up food because I found the kitchen. After all of these years, I found the kitchen. And, and now to this day, I still make a lot of soup. I love making soup. Beautiful. I make soup every week for Chris Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> the the word game. What what because the, the, I, everybody created the games or they played games when they were together. What what was the decision to to, to play the word game in in the in the oh, episode you're in? Spelling bee, which I'm still addicted to from mm-hmm. the New York Times. Um, I I'm already queen. I've already done it. This morning. <laughs> so I am obsessed with that. Chris isn't as obsessed with word games. As <laughs> well, you can no, feel Marianne's you can feel the, that. Marianne's the writer, and she has this massive amount, you know, grammar knowledge of grammar and, nuns, and words and all that business. Years. And uh, uh, I don't know how great an education I got in Missouri. You but, did. Uh, <laughs> well. I get I, I at least I attempt it, you know. <laughs> so Marianne, as that writer, do you ever when when you're putting scenes together, does does Chris ever come by, read the paragraph and and bring it to life by way of his acting? Because I mean, we'll talk about a, a John Lennon and Paul McCartney moment here. Well, you know what? Chris is um Chris is somebody who reads all of my scripts and I get input from him. He's he's wonderful at that. And I read stuff aloud because, you know, dialogue is important. I mean, and he's he's been incredibly helpful with that. He reads everything I write. We're we're a pretty good team, and you know when I'm halfway interested about a particular script, I'll certainly ask Marianne to, you know, take a take a read, and we'll discuss it. And uh, uh, and and some of the most important films I've done are you know, she has coaxed me to uh, pursue, to actually, you know, to do, because some of them I've been on the fence about mm-hmm. and and they have proven to be some of the most um, uh, rewarding uh, jobs I've, you know, I've ever done. Yeah, he didn't want to do American Beauty. He was kept, what? he was like, oh. Wow. He was like this. He was like this script is getting darker and darker. I don't know if I want to go there. And I said, if you're afraid to do it, that means you should do <laughs> <You're> it. Right? <laughs> do, do, she was so right. Do you ever look at yourself and say, you know, in, in a way, I am the Brian Dennehy of this generation because Chris, you're everywhere, my man, and you pull off those roles in a really huge way. 
Oh man, director. thank you, thank you so much. And and I, I did, you know, I actually did work with Brian uh, uh, one time when they when we used to do movies of the week. If you remember those, yes, uh, we'd have a twenty day shooting schedule and turn out these pieces. Uh, so I appreciate that. That's I consider that quite a quite a uh, reward to be compared to Brian. He was um, he was a great talent. Absolutely, Marianne, are you gonna are you gonna release a book with your writing? Because you know you know how they say about artwork. I mean, it, it moves through you. It's not for you. It's for those that receive it. So well, our- I've, I've I've already actually written two memoirs. One nice. about our late son called Jesse that was published by Simon and Schuster in 2010, and one about my mother who was an immigrant who came here uh, to escape fascism and an arranged marriage it sounds so strange now it's called ma speaks up my mother was quite a powerhouse of a woman and uh very funny and uh so i wrote about her and now this third book is um five five dog epiphany about mutual healing and grief and rescue is that is that available online for people to purchase at this point in time no, my agent is just put it, going out there with okay. it, so we Our, shall see. It should well, be soon. I hope I, I get to have a conversation with you about that book when it's released then. Cool. Excellent. Um, I'm ready for it. Well, you guys, congratulations on this movie, Within. It really is a mover. It gets inside the heart, and I think that in a really incredible way, it helps people heal because they can relate. Oh, I love hearing that. Yeah. Thank you, Arrow. Appreciate please, it, man. Please come back anytime. The door is always going to be open for you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you Thank so much. You. Be brilliant today. All right. <laughs> you too. You too.